So really, the heart of community is people connecting. Um, and in a way, uh, in a community, the, the people themselves are the content. Our members are looking for ways to connect with each other and build real, mutually beneficial relationships. So let's go to the next slide and talk about some of the insights here. So relationships, they, they reinforce some of the learning goals that have come up in uh, the other themes. They, because they allow for a natural and deeper discussion of challenges and projects, especially over time as relationships grow. It's also hard. Uh, people come to this community in part because they want help. They want help whether it's implementing their first service design method in their organization, perhaps start a service design uh, department inside their organization. Uh, whatever level they're at, people want some kind of help. But it's hard to talk meaningfully about challenges or even be vulnerable uh, because asking for help is vulnerable. Um, it's hard to do that when you're in a room full of strangers. Um, along those lines of disconnection, uh, as Vaughn mentioned, a lot of members experience imposter syndrome. Um, they feel like they, sh they shouldn't be in the room. Um, and it can just be awkward to make friends on Slack. How do you reach out to people? And another thing, <laughs> another thing that we heard um, uh, consistently was people are looking for local meetups, whether it's in their own U.S. community uh, or there's uh, some people are starting their own uh, their own local meetup groups. Um, so there's a yearning to connect not only online but also offline and local geographies. Okay, so some of the evidence that pointed us towards these insights, and I've clustered the evidence uh, really into four sub-themes. So around conversation, um, it's interesting, we, we have a lot of conversation. I was just looking at the analytics, and we've had, over the history of this site community, we've had 152,000 messages, half of those in public channels, a quarter of those in direct messages, and a quarter of those in private channels. Nevertheless, newer members um, often feel like we don't have anything to offer to the group. Um, as Vaughn mentioned, there is this kind of perception of heavyweights. So uh, one brief illustrative story would be that one participant told us they were observing a conversation about blueprinting. And they didn't know what a blueprint was at first. And they were too scared to ask. They didn't want to look bad in front of the experts. So instead of asking, she did research online and then came back to our community and pretended to have known all along. Another participant told us that having to speak with other people does help you formulate your thoughts and perspectives. So there's a need to, re to somehow lower this barrier to being willing to speak with other people so that people can reap the benefit of being able to form their own thoughts and have them sharpened and honed through conversation. And we've already talked about events, uh, so we can go to the next slide. So I'm on slide 37 now uh, with the sub-theme of connecting. Um, one thing that our members told us is that it's difficult to meet people who aren't active in public channels. Um, as members of this community, we often wish that we knew who we could direct message with a specific subject matter question. It's like, I don't know who I need to ask about, you know, special topic X, you know, change service design and change management in healthcare. 
I don't know who that is in the community. And even if I knew who that was, I'm not necessarily sure that I have the implied permission to contact them. So there are some questions around etiquette, like, you know, it's like being, people told us, it's like being at a cocktail party, observing a really awesome conversation, but feeling like, oh, if I go in, then they'll be sort of annoyed and the conversation will fizzle out and die. Um, we saw some divergent behavior around direct messages. Uh, for some members, it feels really uncomfortable to initiate a relationship through Slack. Other people message individuals directly before they engage in public channels. And in general, members do respond to direct messages. So we can go on to the implications here. So a critical question for us to answer as we brainstorm later is how might we foster one-to-one -one interaction? And this is the this is the really the whole idea of connecting and building relationships. Um, and then, uh, more specifically, how can we make it easy and comfortable to identify and connect with someone who can actually help you with the challenge that you're facing? Um, and then, sort of echoing Vaughn's theme about being new, um, how might we embrace and engage people who are new to the field? And these are people, we want these people to feel a sense of belonging. Um, and we believe that a sense of belonging is the appropriate antidote to imposter syndrome. And then broadening back out again, uh, how might we engage more members in conversation in Slack? And then finally, uh, kind of stretching a little bit, how could we support our community members connecting outside of Slack or in person? Um, this community is a little more than a year old. Um, there's no real limit on it. There's no rule that says that you know we have to anchor absolutely everything in Slack. So what are the other opportunities to create value for our members and help them to connect and build relationships? 